we're going to start. We're going to start with sour. In 18 or 19 years of studying the divine text and preaching this great gospel, and preaching Easter's, um, I've never preached today's subject. It is a sour subject, and it's not just. It's not a regular sour. It's like a warhead, extreme, massive. It's probably the biggest problem you have. It's probably the most common problem, meaning I think, I think all of us struggle with this extreme sour. And I know you've never probably heard a message on this subject on Easter. It, it doesn't seem to fit. But today I'm going to preach a message because I feel, I feel called by God not to just inspire you today, but to help you. Um, and so today I'm preaching on the subject of fear. Fear at Easter. That sounds awful, right? Well, as I begin to study the resurrection of firsthand accounts, people like who were there who wrote about it, I begin to notice a reoccurring theme I had never seen in the scripture before. So if you study like Matthew 28 and you go pre resurrection and post-resurrection and all the language that was spoke, you begin to find a very central theme to the resurrection that, quite honestly, I'd never seen before. And I think it's going to help you today, because if I know anything about us, all of us struggle with sour. And, so, and, and there's nothing that sours your life like fear. There's no thing that sours your relationships like fear. There's no thing that sours and erodes at the peace you could have like fear fear. And as you go into the text, the historical context, the real story that really happened, and you begin to see the words and the language that spoke, you pick up on this theme. And the theme is, is fear. In fact, the first thing that the angel said when people came and visited the tomb was, fear not. Jesus Christ himself, in his resurrected form, the first thing that he said to his disciples was, fear not. The first thing that he said to people that came and visited the tomb right after the resurrection as well, fear not. In fact, if you were to zoom out from the resurrection and look at the Bible from the Old Testament to the New Testament, 66 books, you know what you would find is the most repeated command? Fear not. Oddly enough, 365 times the Bible attempts to deal with your sour. Oddly enough, one for every day, because as Martin Luther said, fear is our constant companion. If you were to record a couple thousand years and, and hear the first person who ever talked, the first words ever recorded by any human being ever would be Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. Adam says, I was afraid, so I hid. Wow. Like the burden for today's sermon is I feel like some of you if, you, if you could be honest, and I'm not sure where, how safe you feel right now, but if, if you were honest, I th and it was just us, I think you would say, I I'm afraid, so I'm hiding. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that few things are holding you back like fear. I think there are few things that keep you from what you could be like fear. I think... Few things sour your life like fear. And fear is interesting because it's so massive, it's so big, but it's hard to put your finger on because fear shows up in like all different types of expressions. There's fear of rejection. Remember when like, they broke up with you in like sixth grade and it followed you through high school and you didn't want to date anybody because you didn't want to fear, you didn't want to experience rejection ever again? Anybody ever been broke up with? Yeah, a line in church. <laughs> How many of y'all have ever been broke up with? Because if you've dated the same person since 11, your last name may be Duggar. Hello. <laughs> Some of y'all. I didn't mean to say that one, but that was funny. <laughs> 19, 27 kids. I don't know what the number is now, right? Fear of rejection. You have fear of disapproval. Some of you have fear of criticism, like, man, I'm, I'm even scared to put myself out there. I'm just, I fear rejection, I fear criticism, I fear, in this day and age, I fear being canceled. Like, if I tell you what I believe, you may never talk to me again. Some of you have an unbridled fear of your past, like you are deathly afraid of failing like you failed. It even affects the way you wake up. There's no sin that sours like fear. Some of you are afraid of unique fears, like death and I don't know, broccoli. 
I, I, have, I have a deep fear of broccoli. <laughs> and you can see it's having an effect on my life. <laughs> I told somebody last week, I'm safe like a chicken nugget, y'all. I just, but my wife likes chicken, hello. <laughs> There's some of you that have a fear of the future. You just, when you think about the future, it just paralyzes you. No, f- no, nothing sours your life like fear. Some of you may be saying, I, I don't know that, that that's me. I don't know that I, when I look in the mirror, I don't know that I see this fearful person. And, and I, I will say that as I've studied the subject of fear, I've, as, as I've read not just the text, but some practical books on, on fear, I would say that most of us are probably unaware of just how many decisions we actually make based on unconscious fear. Like there are things that we do, that we do them because of fear, and we may not even recognize it. In fact, I I went and found some of the the factors, some of the symptoms, if you will, of fear and and how it actually shows up. Check this out. People who are angry. Are you angry, bro? Well, my husband's always, he's just angry. He's not angry. Watch this. He's afraid. Upset. Upset. It's probably because you're watching too much news, okay? (laughs) Are you controlling? Are you tense? See how it just sucked the life out of the room right there? That's what fear does. Sucks the life right out of you. Disturbed. Are you stressed? Uh Uh-oh, I'm in your grits, ain't I? (laughs) Apprehensive. Are you uneasy? Are you nervous all the time? Some of us are too careful, too cautious, Constantly concerned. This sounds like one of those medicine (laughs) commercials. Bad breath, diarrhea, whatever it is. (laughs) Too cautious, concerned. Are you anxious? Are you anxious? Are you sleepless? Without the tunnel PM. Are you troubled? Come on, let's be honest. Are you worried? When you look at the world, do you feel a bigger weight than you used to feel? These are all expressions. These are all fruit. And the root cause of these negative tendencies that we have is fear. And the closer that I got to resurrection, the more I realized the theme that God wants to resurrect you. You know, Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He did not say, I attended a resurrection. Easter wasn't something as just a date on a calendar. The resurrection wasn't just the division of history, B.C., A.D., and all who write 2023 are confirming the resurrection. You realize that? Even if you're an atheist, every time you write a date, you're writing a date from the resurrection. (laughs) That's one of my favorites. 2,023 years since the great resurrection. And as I dive in, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear You know, John Maxwell says in order for people to get it, you've got to say it eight times. Fear not, fear not. You go to Romans chapter 8, verse 15. I want you to see this because nothing will sour your life like fear. I want that to hit home. Are you, are you angry? Are you controlling? Are you too cautious? The extreme unforgettable, sour sin is called fear. And fear is one of those things you can't hide. You wake up, it's right there. You ever tried to hug somebody and they, you know, you ever met that person that can't hug? Just, and by the way, if you don't know, that's because you're one of those. Like it's, it's like, no, I'm good, bro. I'm good. I'm like, you have a giant lemon on your ear. You're not good. This is what, this is what being led around by fear looks like. It's, it, there's not a single part of me it's not big enough to taint. There's the, 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 fear is so big that you can, you can put all the leaves you want to. It, you can't hide it. It will sour everything. Some of you, you don't have marriage problems. First, you have fear problems. Well, I just, I can't get peace in my mind. It, it, maybe it's not so much your job. Maybe it's not the news. Maybe there's this underlying issue. And it's, 
It's not something that's popular to admit, but maybe down here, you're afraid. You're afraid of failing. You're afraid of what's happening in the world. You're afraid of the future. And today, I believe that the Spirit of God is going to show you how to live a fearless life. I feel it so strong in my spirit. Today is the day that everything could change. If you'd be open to receive. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 says this. Check this out. I'm talking about putting an exclamation point on Easter. The resurrection life. Why don't you underline that if you're taking notes? And if you're not taking notes, go ahead and write this down. Okay. The resurrection life. It doesn't say the resurrection moment. It says there is a lifestyle that can be known as resurrection. In other words, there's no part of my life that is dead or dying that does not experience resurrection when I'm with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He is the person of resurrection, carrying the precedent of resurrection. What does that mean? Every time that you come in touch with Jesus, anything that's dead or dying is resurrected. It's a lifestyle, y'all. There is a lifestyle that you can have where you are fully alive. Watch this. The resurrection life you receive. I like that part too. Watch this. Some of you are so smart. You have IQ and EQ and all types of Qs, right? You're smart. You're talented. Can I just tell you this? You can't earn the resurrection life. You can't dress up and look good enough to receive it. You can't buy it. The resurrection life is received. It is a gift. Easter is not meant to just be attended. God wants you to open it up. It's a gift for you. Some of you, it's hard because you love to earn things. You can't earn this one because then you could take the credit. The resurrection life you receive from God's Spirit, watch this. This is what I want you to get, is not a fearful life. The resurrection life you receive from God's Spirit is not a fearful life. Are you... Angry, upset, controlling, tense, disturbed, stressed, apprehensive, uneasy, nervous, too careful, too cautious, concerned, anxious, sleepless, troubled, and worried? <laughs> Are you being led by fear? Like, if you're honest, like, that's, by the way, that's my story. I grew up in church and didn't know God. And all of my decisions, where to go to college, career, what I even wore, what I drove, the things I spent, moments, a lot of that, when I dove down deep, it was motivated by fear, fear of what people think. Fear of failure, fear of rejection. And then you get to Scripture, and you get to Easter, and it says, no, 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 hold up. The resurrection life you receive from God's Spirit is not a fearful life. You are no longer a slave to fear. You know, he said you have to repeat it eight times. I'm going to do it one more time just to help, because I think I've done it about six or seven. This resurrection life you receive by God's Spirit is not a fearful life. Let it set you free. When I look at that verse and I think about all of the fear and how it sours, some of you, like, you, it's, it's hard for you to even have good relationships because it's just, fear has crept into every room that you live in. It just sours and makes everything decrepit in every relationship we're in and every time we wake up, fear's right there. And today, you need to not just watch resurrection. I want you to receive it. I want you to open it up. The question is, how do you receive it? If, 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 if fear is sour, how do we receive in such a way where we live a fearless life? Well, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verse 22, tells us very simply how to do it. I don't want you to just be inspired today. I want you to be helped Matthew 21 says this, if you have faith, everybody say faith. faith. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say faith. faith. If you have faith, you will receive it. So receive what? The resurrection life. If you have faith. Now watch this. If fear is sour, and I'm telling you extreme sour, nothing will sour your life like fear. If fear is sour, here's what I want you to understand, faith is sweet. Now watch this. I want you to get this because I, I don't want you to have the type faith that you try out and it doesn't work. You know, over the last 18 or 19 years, I've had the privilege of pastoring people and all of us have. This is the most common problem. It's the biggest problem. 
And I've heard people before say, oh, I've tried the, I've tried the sweetener before. My life is still sour. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't even want to pass my life out. Nobody wants to drink from this. I don't want to drink. That's why I'm depressed. I don't even like my life. It's just sour. It's full of fear. And I tried the faith thing. In over 18 or 19 years, as I've dove into the context of their life, you know what I found? Most people aren't, ha- aren't handed a biblical faith. Most people, like I grew up thinking faith was, I like go to this church thing, and I, I like believe in God. I had a believing faith. I thought it was an attending faith, like as you go to church. And the problem is when you apply that f- faith to your life, it doesn't sweeten it. It's because it's an unbiblical faith. And when you have a biblical faith, here's what I want you to know. Good Lord. What is this McDonald's sweet tea? (laughs) Do you see this? And a spoonful of faith makes, sorry. Couldn't resist it. Now watch this. Fear is like sour. Faith is like sweet. It's important to understand this because... Faith doesn't dissolve the fear. It just overpowers it. Receiving faith, a biblical faith, the one that works, doesn't mean that fear doesn't knock on the door. It just helps you answer it every time. It doesn't dissolve the fear. It overpowers it. But you have to be careful. Because not all faiths work. I mean, you know that. I don't have to preach that to you. You know it. Have you ever tried a faith that didn't work? Because the Bible's super clear. It's like, hey, the resurrection life is not a fearful life. There's like no nuance to that. The resurrection life is not a fearful life. But I'm fearful. I want to invite you to a biblical faith then. Because not all, you know that there's some faith that you can do that's dead? There's a whole faith that you can believe in that doesn't work. And you know how frustrating it is to read this Bible and see all the incredible things and not live it? How frustrating is that? If you don't have a biblical faith, that's why. And I just want to help. I don't want this to be your whole story. Sour in my 20s, just mad at the world. Been married 25 years. Sour. (laughs) Just got too much month for the money. Sour. God, God doesn't want you to have the bad beer face all of your life. Right? God has a plan for you. And you need to know something. If you can find the biblical faith, you need to understand something. There is no fear stronger than the power of faith. If you're going to get something in your spirit, catch this. There is no fear. Fear of death. Anger controlling, upset, tense, disturbed. Fear of the past, fear of the future, fear of the present, fear of marriage, fear of losing, fear of winning. There is no fear. Don't make me go 1998 t-shirt. Hello. Remember no fear? Some of you are like, no. It's whatever. (laughs) There is no fear stronger than the power of faith. It doesn't dissolve it. It does overpower it. If you find the right faith, you you got to check this one out. Um. I don't want you to practice an unbiblical faith because it won't work. Then you'll just eject it and say, I need to tear it off. Eh, you probably didn't have the right one. James chapter 2, verse 17 says this. Faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it's dead. And some of you have tried that. Has anybody else tried that? You know there's nothing more frustrating than wanting resurrection while practicing religion? What is Religion. Religion is man's approach to God. That's like you saying, hey, it's sour and I'm going to sweeten it myself. Some of you have tried that. That's why we have coping mechanisms. I'm angry, so I'm going to go downtown on Broadway. That's going to help it a lot. (laughs) I can stop the sermon right now. You'll be like, yep, Lord, I need Jesus. (laughs) For some of y'all, I'm praying that God would turn wine into water. Hello. Hello. That's that reverse miracle, hello. <laughs> controlling, I'm just going to stop controlling. Well, good luck. Trouble, you can't, you can't do it yourself. You can't do it yourself. You need, you need a different faith. Some of you, this is going to wreck you because you grew up like me. I grew up Second Baptist. 
I don't know why we weren't first. We got there late, I guess. Like, but, <laughs> but like, I thought faith was like going to church. I did. And it did not work. Interestingly enough, Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, like he has copyrights, Jesus, when he approached all of us in our sin, in our sour, he did not say, here's a reading plan. You need a reading plan. All of us need a reading plan. What's the first thing that he said? Because remember, order follows outcome. How do you think about faith? You know what his words were? Hey, bro, follow me. Follow me. You want a fearless life? Do you really want a fearless life? Or do you want to be led by fear? Because a fearless life comes from a following faith. Not a stationary faith. I grew up, I had a watching faith. And that faith does not overpower the sour. You need a following faith. And for some of you, for the first time, or the first time in a really long, in a really long time, God is going to awaken you today. Because your whole life is sour. We don't want to admit it on a Sunday, but it is. Look at your relationships. The decisions that you make are oftentimes made by this unconscious fear. And today what I want to gift you from the scripture is I'm going to gift you what I call the four wills of following. That's for my Dixon folks, four-wheel drive, bless God. <laughs> Where are my Dixon folks at? <laughs> roo, roo, roo. Got camouflage on right now. Me too. I'm in green. Hello. <laughs> Hop in a deer stand right now. Don't judge. Let these boots, don't let these boots fool you. I can catch a bass. Hello. <laughs> I can do it. I'm going to give you four wheels of following. So grab your notes. Grab your phones. Because I'm telling you, listen, listen. You struggle with fear too? It's the most common problem. It's what all of us have. It's the biggest problem. The resurrection's about fear. So let me help you. Because you receive it by faith. But it's not just any faith. So I'm going to give you four wheels for following. Why four wheels? Because if you have one wheel going, how many of you guys know what your life does? It just travels around sour. If you have only two wheels that work, it doesn't work in the mud. Hello. You need a four-wheel drive faith. That sounds like a good country song. Somebody write it. I'm co-writing. Hello. You need a four-wheel drive faith. I don't mean that. Four wheels going all the time. Watch this, watch this. And I'm going to show you something. An active faith. A moving faith. How do I get away from sour? I head towards faith. I have four wheels. I have movement. I have a faith that move me, moves me towards the sweetness. And you know when your life becomes a sweet fragrance, it becomes a taste and see, and other people... When they get around you, they're like, hey, what made it sweet? I know your story. It was sour. You say what faith did. There's no fear stronger than the power of faith. And you know why I use a spoonful? Because the Bible said even faith the size of a mustard seed. Let that minister to you today. And I'm going to give you these four wills. Over 20 years of studying the Bible... You can go from Old Testament to New Testament and find out there's four things that God wants you to do all at the same time. And if, if I can get you to buy into that, I'm just telling you, you'll have the type of faith that will move you towards a fearless life. And some of you, God's calling your business to do much more. And right now you're just doing whatever you can manage. Ugh. Don't live a life that's so small that you can manage it. Amen. Live the type of life that gives God credit for how big he is. Don't live a life that makes God look small. Your friends ought to say, whew, how'd your life get so good? I'm going to sip some lemonade because it's actually really good. And it's had, what service is this? It's had a lot of sugar, so it's McDonald's <laughs> sweet. I'm going to take five minutes. I'm going to give you the practical things. Man, I really want you to write these down. I want you to anticipate this moment. God is getting ready to give you maybe what you've never had. Maybe you had a watching faith, an attending faith, but I want to give you a practical faith that you can, you can try on Monday. It, it, it'll work every time. Four wills that need to always go forward. Four wills of following. The first will, the front left tire, I call that one knowing God. Write that one down, knowing God. Let me show you how this combats fear. As I pursue knowing God, 
And we're going to help you. We are committed, ridiculously committed, to every Sunday helping you know God. That's why church is a big, I, I, it'll help. I'm just telling you, we are committed to helping you know God every Sunday. Here's why. The more that you know God and experience the approval of God, the less you are likely to be soured by the fear of rejection of men. If, if, listen, if I'm affirmed by God, I don't really care what you think. See how that works? Knowing God, that's something, it's not a one-stop shop. See, I thought that I raised my hand, filled out, we had to fill out a card of membership. Hello. We had to fill out a card and come down to the front and sing the Family of God song, but they didn't have words on the screen, so you just went like this. <laughs> Family of God. <laughs> that's what we did. But I want you to have this progressive, ongoing relationship with God, not religion, which is where you tried the faith, which I just watched, it's not following. We want you to have a following faith. Knowing God, that's that front tire. We're going to help you with that. The second one is called finding freedom. So, so I've, got to, I've got to know God and consistently continue to be in relationship with Him. We're going to help you with that. And then I've got to find freedom. So much and so many of us have a fear of our past, so we can't embrace the future. You cannot hold on today while holding on to yesterday. And what's interesting is if you get around God's, you get in a group, that's, that's our commitment to you, is always have a bunch of groups for you to choose from so that you can be honest with somebody eventually, find a new friend and take off the mask and go, here's what I'm holding on to. And they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't, have to, you don't have to hold on to that. You find freedom in groups of people where you can be honest. The, the Bible promises you can have freedom if you can talk about it with God's people. So that's why you have a ton of groups. We commit to putting groups around you that you can join. Why? If you let go of your past, your past will let go of you. And that's just all, it's just, it's an ongoing thing. Just always be in a place where you can be safe and honest. We are a real church with real people. And watch this, with some real problems. With some real problems. There's some people on your row that got felonies. You know what we call those people? Staff members. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that one for a long time. But you always have to be in a place. We used to have this old song, he's still working on me. Man, that song's true. I've had the opportunity to serve the Lord for over 20 years, and I'm just saying, he's still working on me. Finding for him, that's that second wheel. But don't get stuck. Most people get stuck there. Two-wheel drive and can't get through the mud. Number three, here's the third one. Write this one down. Discover purpose. Barna Research, this massive research group, did a study and found out that nearly nine out of ten people that go to church cannot tell you why they're on planet Earth. Beyond their nine-to-five job, they don't know why they're here. And that may be you. You're like, the reason I fear the future is because I don't know my role in it. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with my life. And that's why I'm afraid. It's like, I don't want to choose the wrong thing. And I don't want to, as Mark Twain said, become really good at doing the thing I wasn't born to do. So here's my promise to you as a church family. Our whole church is geared towards this. Every single Sunday, there will never be a Sunday that you will ever attend this church where we don't have a class that helps you discover your purpose. Because you are gifted. As Maxwell says, there is a 10, not a 7.5, not an 8. Because God made you, Imago Dei, you carry the image of God. You are gifted and you have power. You know how there are things that tick you off? That's on purpose. You have purpose and we're just committed to help you find it. Because if you'll find your purpose in the future, you won't fear it so much. So we have a class that is solely devoted every Sunday after service, 30 minutes long before you go to Hattie B's, hello, to help you with that. Discover purpose. Fourth. Here's a fourth wheel, and it's not a one-stop shop. You've got to keep them going, and that's why our church programming is built around this, just to keep you going, discover purpose, to making a difference. It's interesting to me that everybody in life is handed lemons. All of us, right? Can I get an amen? All of us have some sour in our life. It's not that faith dissolves the sour, it just overpowers it. One of the ways that, that it overpowers it is when your life becomes about others, your problems get smaller. If I'm staring at my problem all the time, this is what some of us look like. I can't believe this. I'm where I'm still at. Anybody know a Debbie Downer? Sour Stacy? 
That's a guy. I like that. I'm saying that one next service. Sour Stacy. These are the people that worship like this. <laughs> Their sour spirit has made it to a sour face. And now your nickname Sour Stacy. Okay? The moment that you begin to look at other people, it's amazing how when your problem be- sits back in the periphery, how life gets a little better for you. And one thing I'm committed to do is always give you opportunities, whether it's outreach or the 30-something teams. There will be five, six, seven hundred people this week in serving, making a difference on a team. And we're committed to give you that opportunity. Here's why. You know what a following faith is? It's four wheels of knowing God and finding freedom, discovering, I wish I had four hands, discovering purpose and making a difference. The resurrection life you receive from God's Spirit is not a fearful life. Are you angry, upset, controlling, tense, disturbed, stressed, apprehensive, uneasy, nervous, too careful, too cautious, concerned, anxious, sleepless, troubled, worried? I could have said diarrhea because it feels like it fits. If you're led by fear, the invitation of God today is to receive a resurrection by committing or recommitting to a following faith. So I know we're about to go. I know we're out on the plaza. There's pictures out there, bunnies, incredible things. And I want all of that for you. But first, I want the Spirit of God in this room and every room on site, every room online. Just have a moment. Come on, just a moment with God. Would you bow your head, close your eyes? Just ask the Spirit of God in your mind, God, which is my next step? Is it that I am spiritually disconnected? If that's the case, I need to make a decision today to know God. And remember, it's a receive. It's not a gift. This is you receiving. God wanted to gift you salvation and relationships so that you couldn't take the credit. That's how people become narcissistic and arrogant Christians. He said, no, I want to gift you salvation. You came in sour, I'm going to sweeten it. And maybe that's your decision. Or maybe it's finding freedom and you're like, man, I got I to get over some things. I got and 2023 could be my year of freedom. Maybe you're like, I need to discover my eternal purpose and bigger than my nine to five or my job or my entrepreneurial adventure. Like I need to find purpose or, or I'm ready to make a difference. Whatever that is, let the spirit of God real quick, let him speak to you. Just ask him, which one is it, God? Do I need to know you and know you, like really know you? Do I need to find some freedom? Do I need to discover purpose? Do I, need to, do I need to live life beyond myself and make a difference? Not be about building my platform, but building God's? Maybe that's you. Make a difference. And with every head bowed, every eye closed, if you know, just in your heart, in this room, every room, you know that right now, fear is your most common problem and it's your biggest problem. And you need Jesus. You need the sweetening grace of God to overpower the sin and the fear. And you want to make a decision right here and right now to really know Jesus personally and to receive the resurrection of life. If that's you on the count of three, I want you to boldly raise your hand and I'm going to say a prayer with you and then we'll help navigate you through it. One, two, three, all over this room, if that's you, lift your hand. Say, that's me. Yes, 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 I see the hand. Yes, 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 I see that hand. Awesome, yes, I see that hand. I see that hand. Yes, yes, ma'am, I see that hand. You can put your hands down. I want you to repeat this just inside in your heart, not out loud right now. Dear Jesus, come to my life. Set me free of my sin. Today, I choose to know you, to believe in you, and ultimately, to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we put our hands together for the tons of people that just made a decision to know God, to follow Jesus? All right, here's what I want to do. I only get to do this one time a year because it's the time where all of you show up. So here's what I want to do. I want to do the Easter survey. We are not telemarketers. It's literally two questions. And the second question I really need your help with because in a couple weeks, we start our most anticipated series of the year. It's a relationship series. And so I need your help. So grab your phones, uh, pull up your camera. Um, If you don't have an iPhone, I don't even know what you have. Do you call it even camera? But pull it up. There's a QR code. 
If you go to the QR code, it's a very quick survey. Put your name, number, so we can be like a concierge and come alongside you and help you with it. The first question is, I think my next spiritual step is to blank. And a lot of you just made that decision, so you would click A, I wanna know Jesus. I wanna commit to knowing Jesus. And if you did that today, we congratulate you. We're very excited for you. For some of you, it's B, it's find freedom, and we're gonna, we're gonna help you get in some groups and find some community. Thirdly, discover my purpose. And fourth, make a difference. So go ahead and click that button. And then here's, here's what, I really need your help. And like all of you, I need you to help me with this. We're about to teach on love and romance and sex and dating and marriage according to scripture. A little ratchet, a lot biblical, okay? Here's what I need for you. I need you to take about 15 seconds. Come on, band, give me a little something right here. A little writing music. Oh yeah. Write it down. Write it down. I meant, type it in. New series coming soon is called Love Like Lemonade. It's a relationship series. I can't wait, so I'm excited about your feedback. Once you've done that, why don't you stand to your feet? Everybody in the room, stand to your feet. Next weekend is the big weekend. It's celebration weekend. We're doing baptisms. If you have yet to be baptized, make sure you take the QR code. It'll help you. Even if you don't sign up, we're prepared in case you did not sign up to celebrate. Next weekend at 8.30. 10 o'clock and 11.45 is celebration weekend. If you do not like to party, don't come because we're going to celebrate all the decisions made today with baptism. It'll be a ton of fun. I'm so glad that you were here. Thank you so much for coming. Can we do it? Can you do me a favor? Can you give it up for all of the teams that pulled off today? So thankful for them. Come on, can we give it up for the next generation team, kids teams, dream team? Come on, worship team, production team. Thank you guys so much. Now that we've gathered, tons of people have made decisions. We're aimed and ready for celebration next weekend. Come on, let's go out and love God, love people, enjoy life. See you on the plaza.